Greetings, salutations, and all good things in between. What's up everyone, Matt here. So one of the most common requests for information I get is about email templates. What can I do? What can I do? How can I get it to work? Uh, yeah, well, what do you do to make it look nice and this, that, and whatever. Um, so in this video, I'm going to go over, I have some modifications I need to do to my workflow template. I'm going to bring you along for the ride. Let's do this. Okay, so what actually happened is I sent an email off to a client with an invoice inside it. And the invoice is actually generated from an AppSheet app that I have that I've built over the years. And if you're a Patreon supporter of mine, you can get access to this. It's TTIOTA. If you just search for that, you'll find it. It's a sample app you can copy. There's a couple of versions of it. There's a single company version and a multi-company version. So if you want to use it for multi, anyways. So, uh... I sent an, e uh, an invoice to a client and they came back and they said, hey, can you update the invoice so that it includes the company name and our address? And I got, and it got me thinking, I was like, wait a minute, not, not in there already? And I went, I looked, no, turns out nowhere on the invoice that I'm generating does, is there anything that indicates who this is supposed to go to? Whoops. My bad. <laughs> so I need to modify this email template so that it's got a space that it says, you know, like, who is this to? Um, now I have these columns. I have columns inside my table, right? I have a client table that's got the name of the client. I've got a project name and like, so I have all of this detail already available. I just need to put a space inside my workflow template to display that information like at the top of the, the uh, email. Um, so this is like the, like one of the final outputs, what it can look like. And what I wanna do is, so I know that like, if you look here, you can see there's clearly like a box. And so like, there's another line. So like this box continues like this. Um, so like I know, and if we go to the template, I can show you this, um, right? So I've got, a table right here and there's just another another column over here on the side that's empty there's nothing inside it um, and you can see underneath so I've got like there's this box that says you know the invoice type amount is due or void or whatever whatnot and then how much it's supposed to be um, if we go back to the file right so you can see that's this box here and then there's between between this box and this header for this, right? Go back here. There's some stuff that conditionally shows up. So if I have bill to details, they will show up. And if I have make payable to, they will show up. And they're inside this little table right here that you, you can kind of see, right? Um, so I've got a table here that's conditional. I've got a line. I've got this little thing that says bill to invoice details. Oh, that's the... It also, all of that is wrapped inside an if statement, right? So if there is neither of those, this whole section just doesn't show and that's why there's nothing there. But like, I wanna take over this white space right here and I wanna put inside there who this is supposed to go to because it's got my information up here and I wanna put theirs right here. So if I go back here, right? So, like this is just a table and this is just, um, so like if I make the columns temporary, I don't want to do that. It'll mess up my, <laughs> it'll mess up this nice little outline that I've got that's isolated by itself. So, um, but like, right. So here's a column. Oops. Did I insert that? No. Okay. Yeah. So there's the, this is one giant one. And then up here, if you look up in the header, right, I've got one, two, three columns. So this is just for spacing, but this is what I want. So like in here, I want to do something like two and I'm going to make this bold and like, okay. So if I go back to my app and so all of this executes from the invoices perspective. So what I want then, yeah, is I want to pull the client name 
from the client table. Yep. So that. All right. So that gets me the client name. Um, let's see what else. Um, yeah, and their address and their phone and their website. I basically kind of want to reconstruct this type of thing, but for them. So like, okay, maybe what I want to do is like, I'll drop this down, leave that there and like leave this here like this and do something like this. Mirror something like this. So and this would be like from turn off the bold and then yeah something Oop. not what I wanted and like drop that down like that and maybe like that okay but that's gonna make this, which is three lines right now, grow to one, so it'll grow from three, it's doubling in size. Which is gonna push all of this further down. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, we'll see what it looks like. Maybe I'll get rid of this one extra little space here. Yeah, in fact, I think I will do that. And I wonder if I can get away with trying. Nope. Um, okay, so if I hard break that, can I move this line by itself? Yep. Okay. And if I do that, yeah, there we go. Sit right at 25. Yeah, that's a little too far. I could do I I can I can deal with that. So it's gotta be a hard a hard break for this. And we'll put it back this to that. There we go. Now to look similar. Okay, and then do a shift enter to just to get to a new line in the same paragraph. Because <clears throat> I want to recreate essentially this. So like now I want to do like phone. But I want to wrap this in an if, and then like, is not blank phone, and then be like, phone, phone. Yeah, and then, and if. So if is not blank, now I'm gonna go find the name of the phone. Okay, it needs to be a D reference. So it needs to be like client link dot phone. So like, like that. So if is not blank, client link dot phone but dot client phone, then Okay, and then this needs to be like that. So if is not like that, and then it'll show this. And so we'll have phone with a space, and then the client's phone number, and then that's it. Okay, that line won't exist if there is no phone. Okay, and then I want the email. Okay, so I need to do the same type of thing like this, where I need like the whole thing, but I want the email. Um, let's see, I have, I have like, hey, thought I had a current contact in here. Related users, related contacts. But I don't see their current contact. Yeah, 
Here we go. Oh, I made it an actual com uh, an actual thing. Okay, so I'll have to chaining deref. Ooh, chaining dereferences. Check out the documentation for that. It's fun stuff. Now the chaining deref to get whatever the current contact's email is. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so I think the thing that I really want to do is I want to do like the client name, the client's phone, the client's address. Yeah, so I'll do like phone, do their address if it exists. So I guess I need to do this whole line essentially over again, but change this for instead of the, ad the phone to the address. Yeah. All right, it's getting a little muddy inside here, getting a little hard to keep things separated. So I'm going to temporarily space everything out. So I've got the name, I've got the phone, I've got the address. And then underneath that, I want their web address if they have it. Like if I have that in their thing, it will make this look nice, you know? Um, yeah. So we have the client name their phone, the, I can get rid of this little placeholder thing at the front. So I just want their address on the address line. And their website. Yep. Here we go. That's all I want. That's what I want to do. So kind of clean that up. All right. So let's <clears throat> excuse me let's go try this and see what it does right so go back to my app and all i need to do i don't need to save or update or do nothing because as long as it's as long as everything's correct right let me just check really quick make sure syntax is good i'm not missing any closing parentheses i'm not missing an end yep see like this end if is missing one of its little closing caret things, which means this one is two. So if is not blank, this, that, and whatever. Yep, client, this, that, and whatever. Yep, fine. Website, fine. Okay, good thing I did that final check. All right, so now, yeah, like I said, I don't need to go through and do like any kind, like I don't need to come over here and mess with this or do anything. Don't need to do it. All I need to do is trigger the, that, template to get used so like I'm gonna come in here this is that this is that invoice that I opened earlier and I want to update the invoice all right so if you see it when you're when you're doing something like this all right you see how long it taking it's taking that's a good sign you see, it's still taking a long time. All right, that's a good sign. Whenever you're testing a, uh, an email template or like if you're making a, a PDF, you're making a file or anytime that you're doing something like, see, it's still, it's still sitting there chewing on it. Like anytime that you see something where you're trying to get it to make a file or update something like that and it takes a while for that sync to go through, that's usually a good sign. That means that the system's actually doing something. You know what I mean? Uh, and your thing's probably gonna happen. If it just stops right away, you probably encountered an error and you need to go back and look. So since that took forever to process, um, let's see if this updated the file. Okay, now that, so helpful hint, the, the links that you have inside of your AppSheet app, they technically contain a link to like a cached version of the file. So like when you load the app, the app downloads everything that it needs and it stores it on your device, right? Okay, uh, that link that's inside there that I'm kind of hovering above right here, this guy, like that is the cached version. And in 24 hours, somewhere in there, like it's less than that, I don't know what the exact number is, but like in 24 hours, the new version of the file will appear. Um, if you go to your Google Drive and you look in the folder where the file was saved, the new file is there. The file is updated. It's 100% like it's supposed to be. It's just when you click the link inside your app sheet app, that link is to the cached version inside the app. So just FYI. 
That's why when I clicked on it, it took me to something that looks exactly like the original one, which is up here. Um, but if I navigate to the file where uh, folder where it was saved, so now I gotta now I gotta find now I gotta find the individual thing, right? So let's see. If I go here. Uh, okay, so it's just inside invoice files, and then it's just creating the invoice. Yeah, so the folder is literally just inside an invoice files. I'm not folderizing this. Oh my God, that needs to be put in. All right, so if I go to my Google Drive and I search for this folder, forgive me as I do this off screen. Okay, so I found it now. And so what I got to do now is I need to find this invoice files folder. Yep. Okay. Sort this by last modified. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. Or not. Um, man, I'm not. There we go. <laughs> Google is not working for me right now. I don't want the drop down. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. And if I open this in another thing, here we go. Boom, there we go. So same invoice, right? It's this 4410, it's like a test invoice. I just threw a whole bunch of stuff inside here to see what it, what it would look like if it was big, right? Uh, you've got this from Multitech Visions, this, that, and whatever up at the top. You have a two Multitech Visions, yeah, because this is the, the, the client is a test client, which is me. So totally makes sense. But yeah, no, you can totally see. So like, you know what I mean? Like this is all my info. And then this is all the info that I pulled from my client reference. So like if I go back to this template, right? So I typed in all of this from stuff and all of this other stuff down here was programmatically derived using all of the client name, the client phone, the client address. Oh yeah. So the address is inside there. Yep. Cause I got an address inside the thing and the website that actually looks, that actually looks all right. The thing that I might do is move this into this blank section right here, because I know that it's, it's relatively going to fit. And like, I can move this over I didn't break anything. No. Okay. So like I can move that over and like I could, can I smush it even more? Okay. Like how close can I get to that? <laughs> and then take all of this and just boop, drop it in there. All right. Okay. So now what is that? Let me make sure that's empty. Okay. So now if I do that, what does this look like now? Okay. So now I just made a test. So this is the cool thing about workflows like this. As long as you're not, as long as you don't break it, you know what I mean? Like as long as you don't remove one of the necessary carrots or like, like I just moved everything. As long as I made sure that I moved everything and there was nothing left over, like I didn't break it. I just kind of moved stuff around. And so the cool thing is that you don't have to do a full refresh of your app or anything. You just literally need to go and run the thing again. That's what I love about it. It makes it so easy to test the changes in your workflow because you don't have to go through like a save through app sheet or nothing. You just go back to your app and trigger it again. Wait for it to upload. The thing that takes forever though, the thing you do have to wait for is, you gotta wait for it to do, wait for it to actually process and come up with its thing and do what it's supposed to. Um, all right, so this is what it looks like now, right? And then, okay, it's done. So now I'm in my, uh, if I go back to my Google Drive and I see, yep, just updated. So this is a new version. Yep, there it is. And there's a new one. If I open this in a new window, now you can see what it looks like. So clearly, you know, I need a little, a little cleanup here, a little formatting so that like I, I, you know, this doesn't, or there's really nothing I can do to avoid that sort of thing because it's going to happen no matter what. Um, cause their URL for their website could be really long. You know, that could encompass three, three, just same thing with the, the address. You know what I mean? Like 
I know one of my clients' addresses is a very long string. And so it's going to be like four or five lines inside there. Um, yeah, I think I want let's, well, other little things. So like it'd be kind of nice if this would float at the top like these are floating at the top. And maybe it'd be kind of nice if I could combine these together. So you remember like there's a box right here. It'd be kind of nice if I could like get that to flood down inside that. That would kind of shrink that whole section. I don't know if I can, because I think these are two separate tables. Oh no, they're one. Okay, so maybe if I, are these merged? Unmerged cells, yep, okay. So there you go, so now you can see the two separate cells. And like, can I merge vertically? Oh, that's sweet. And then merge vertically. Okay, and then the line needs to be white. Yeah, and then like this one, the line needs to be, I can't remember what it was. Not that one, this one, there we go. Okay, and then like this cell here, if I go to table properties, go to the alignment, the cell vertical alignment. Yeah, it's at the bottom. I want it on the top. Yeah, so this invoice number should be at the same line now as this two versus floating down here. So like all of this should smush down. And it looks like I could move this over, you know, whatever, however far that is. So like, even if it doesn't look good on the template, it doesn't matter if it doesn't look good on the template. Like I was saying, I could move it like that far. So like, even though it did that here, when I output that, uh, you know, everything gets like a little, a little expansion. Like there's a, like all the padding gets like a couple more pixels. It kind of seems like so. You know, it doesn't matter what it looks like in the template. It matters what it looks like when you do the output. Um, all right, so grouped at the top, shrunk this back a little bit. Okay, let's run that one more time. This is also one of the downsides of working on, like when you're trying to make files and all of that, is that there's no fast way to do this. Like. And if I'm if I have to validate, then I have to go back through an app sheet save cycle. And so like just this, I mean, you see how long it takes for this file to to finish generating itself. Right. So like every time that I make one little change, I've got to sit here and fiddle my thumbs. There we go. It's finally done. And now I can go and open the file again. This is looking a lot better. That's looking a lot better. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. Yes, a lot. All right. The only one of the final little bits that I notice is like, it seems like this and this, maybe you're using a different font size. So like I'll grab the format painter and just, nope, it's the same thing. All right, fair enough. But I do think that I want to shrink these. Like I could shrink all of this text to like that and do the same thing for mine. Just make it a little smaller. And you know, if I do that, then that means that I could move this over just a little bit more. Yeah, give and give the client two space just a little more, just a little more for it. All right, let's push that. But yeah, this is starting to look, this is starting to shape up and look pretty nice. This is a lot better. I can't believe that I've, I've gone this long. Like I've been using, I've been using this system, like this little output, this invoice since the beginning. And nobody has ever said to me, hey man, the, like the invoice doesn't have my name on it or it doesn't have my company's name on it. Like there's no indication of who this invoice is supposed to go to. It's just an invoice. <laughs> At least now there's some information on it. Okay, that's done processing. Come over here, open the file. 
we can see the final see that looks nice i'm liking that that that's looking real nice that's looking real nice yeah so this is what it kind of started as this is what we ch we moved it and then we did this and now it's that looks nice i like it well hey everyone I want to thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope this gave you some insight on how to work with workflows and this, that, and uh, this, that, and whatever inside the thing. Um, if you like stuff like this, I would appreciate a subscribe. If you look at how many subscribers I have, I'm getting dangerously close to a thousand. Be nice to break a thousand. All right, y'all. I'll see you in the community.